Okay, let's see if we can get this video going. Alright, so here I am with my BMW. It's a 1997-318Ti, which is a little stubby version without the back four doors. The two-door with the, the hatchback. When I bought it, it was uh, pretty slow. So I decided to um, upgrade it with a cheap Chinese uh, supercharger that I found which is down in there. So that would be the AMR 500 supercharger and it is a 500cc per rotation supercharger. So what that means is is that um, depending where you're going to be running it from I have down here um, that it's my uh, crank pulley and it is going down along the belt there going to the pulley on the AMR. Now I changed out the AMR pulley from the one that came included with it. This one here is, I believe it's a 1.75 inch pulley, whereas this one here is from a Volkswagen. It's a, I think it's a 5 inch pulley. So that gives me a decent ratio for this. Um, so it's actually boosting around 5 PSI at the moment. Um, as well as the other systems that I had to do to put it in, um, Number one, because you're running more boost and this car is running the stock ECU, um, it really doesn't know what to do with all the added air that's being forced into it. So to compensate for that, you'll need to run an adjustable fuel, uh, rising rate fuel pressure regulator. And I have mine set at three bar um, because that's what the stock, um, stock one, um, the stock fuel pressure regulator is on the car. So now what a rising rate does is that it will, um, when boost comes in along this vacuum tube here, which comes along here and it's teed into the intake, it will actually increase the fuel pressure. So as the engine's boosting, the fuel pressure will actually come up with it and that more or less gets it running right under boost. Um, other modifications that I did obviously was the whole intake system. The stock one used to come like this, run here then run across the motor and then um, yeah used to basically have an intake right over here which wasn't even a really good design to be honest um, so yeah so now basically what happens is is you have my intake right over here which I ran down over here I don't know if you can see it and yeah, right in there it comes up it's routed into here now I have my mass airflow sensor here so that is able to take the air in comes along, you have a intake pipe, intake pipe, curves down into, into here. Now this is teed off here. This is my blow-off valve right here. So basically this is a recirculating blow-off valve. Um, so the air comes in, goes down, comes up through here, gets compressed in here, then comes up, goes to here. Now here, if this system, you're off on the throttle and the throttle plates are closed, this will bypass and allow the air to recirculate back into the system. So that way um, you don't come into any issues with the engine running because the mass airflow sensor, it records how much air enters it. So let's say 10 units of air enter it. If you have a, a blow off valve that uh, vents to the atmosphere, you'll lose that PSI and the engine will think that more air has ent entered it than actually has and it'll be the same as if you had a vacuum leak on a normal car. Um, so yeah, so when the air is compressed and going, comes along here. This here is my air temperature sensor. So that actually creates a bit of heat. My air temperature sensor, it's not the ideal spot. Would have rather put it on the other side of the intercooler. However, um, due to fitment issues and um, poor planning, I suppose on my part, um, you have it coming in like this, goes through here, comes through the, the intercooler, and then right into the stock intake. Um, throttle body, I mean, sir. So it comes in, goes in, does all the stuff that it does. Um, for my intercooler, because it's not um, mounted exactly where I want to put it, I was going to put it in the front, but just frankly got lazy and it was running all right. Um, so what I did was I got this little intercooler from, I think it was a Ford or something, and bought a little tiny radiator fan for it. Um, yeah, right there. So that's wired in um, to a switch on the inside of the cab. And I just made a little bit of a duct for it, used some silicone and um, yeah, just basically cut and weld it. Um, so basically that ducts that fan all to suck, well actually it blows 
through here. So air comes into the car, comes in, gets sucked up like this, and then just goes somewhere. But it seems to cool it off decently. Um, because I was running um, all this in here, I had to get rid of the stock fan. So I had to go to a scrap and find a um, small fan. This one was, I believe, from a Toyota. Yeah, like a Yaris or something. Anyway, it's just an electric fan, uh, which is wired into the stock um, fan wiring, as well as this fan. So basically those will turn on once the temperature sensor reaches um, too hot. But what I also did was I bypassed this to an actual switch on the inside so that you have control over when this and this turns on. Um, if you choose to, if not, it'll trip when um, it gets too hot and overheats. Um, that's pretty much the run through of this car. Um, has more power, I'm gonna probably bring it to a dyno at some point. Um, but for now, that's just uh, that's just the way it is.